welcome. Today we're going to be talking about the rotational inertia of a long thin rod, but this time it's not going to have a uniform mass density, it's going to have non-uniform mass density. We're going to have it um, about this axis at the end, so it's going to be twirling around kind of like my pen if my pen uh, were twirling around this end, so like that. It's going to be twirling around that way, and we're, we're going to find its rotational inertia. Okay, so let's just make up a certain, we still need to know what the mass density is, but it doesn't have to be uniform here. So here we have a rod, and here's our axis that it's going to rotate around. And notice how I've shaded, I don't know if you can see this on the video, but this is, this is darker at this end than this end. So this is, uh, so as it goes along, it gets more and more dense. There's more mass per length at the end than there is in the, in the right here. Okay, so we're going to use um, uh, lambda to represent um, linear mass density. So lambda is going to be linear mass density, and I'm just making up this relationship. I just, I mean, it could be any relationship that it, um, any function, but let's just make it nice and simple for us today. So it's going to be um, lambda is equal to some constant c, c is just a constant, and then x squared. So what this is saying is as you go further from the axis, x is equal to zero here, right at the axis, x is equal to zero. So if you put in a zero here, this is going to be, there's going to be no mass at the very end right here because zero times c is going to get, c is a positive constant. Um, so then as you move over, there's going to, the mass is, the, the mass density is going to increase, and it's going to increase a lot as you move over because it's x squared. Okay, now um, linear mass density is the mass per length, and so it's, um, you, you can think of it as um, uh, the mass per length or dm over dx. Like if you have a little mass over a little length, that would be the linear mass density. Okay, so um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the linear mass density. I'm going to find the um, rotational inertia of just this little guy, this little dx right here. So this is a little dx, and it's got a mass m. And let's say the length of the stick is l, so the whole length of the stick is l. Okay, and so this is dx and this is dm, so it's a very tiny, it's a very tiny amount of the stick dx, dx representing infinitesimally small um, distance. So because of that, the mass is going to be really tiny too, so it's going to be dm. Okay, so um, it turns out then that the rotational inertia just of this little, this little dm, the rotational inertia just from that is going to be this. It's going to be the, it's going to be tiny, it's going to be di tiny, not just i, but di tiny, meaning infinitesimally small. And it's going to be the mass of this times how far it is from the axis squared. So that's the equation that we're using. Uh, this is x squared. So it's going to be dm the mass of that, times x squared. This is using the equation that i for um, a point mass is just m times r squared. So the m is dm and the r is that gets squared is an x this time. Okay, so um, it turns out then that um, we don't want to just know the, the inertia for just this little piece. We want it for the entire length. So the inertia for the rotational inertia for the entire length would be just summing up all these dmx squareds. Okay, notice our variable is um, x squared and our dm is um, not in terms of x. So our variable is x and our dm, our differential is in terms of m. So I got to get my differential in terms of, um, I have to get it in terms of dx. Okay, so what I'm going to do is come on over here with me, over to this side of the paper. And um, so I'm going to say that lambda is dm over dx. So dm over dx is also equal to cx squared. Okay, so I'm just combining, I'm just setting these two equal to each other, these two. So dm over dx is cx squared. So now if I bring the dx on the other side dm is equal to cx squared dx. Okay, so I've, I've successfully found a way to um, put dm in terms of dx. 
Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to bring it over here. So I is going to be equal to dm. Uh, let me put the x squared first. So x squared and then dm, I'm going to sub in cx squared. C is like just a positive constant, x squared dx. And I want to integrate that from x is equal to 0 to x equals l. Okay, I can, this is really x squared times x squared is x to the fourth power. So let me go ahead and do that. So I is equal to, uh, let me pull out this constant C, and then I have um, x to the fourth dx from 0 to L. Okay, so if I go ahead and take the integral of that, it's going to be C times um, 1 fifth x to the fifth from 0 to L. Okay, now let me go ahead and sub in L first and then 0 after that. So it's going to be I is going to be equal to uh, you can't see that, can you? I have to bring this all the way up here so you can see this. So I is equal to um, C times um, one-fifth L to the fifth minus um, zero, because when you put in zero in there, you just get zero. So the... Um, so the I for this is going to be just um, CL to the fifth over five. <laughs> All right. All right. So um, that's what, that's what uh, this is going to be. So let me go ahead and box this. That's what this happens to be. It's going to be the constant C, L to the fifth over five. That's what your rotational inertia is going to be for this one. All right. Thanks. Bye.